Doesn't it feel like there's a filter for literally everything these days? There are so many ways to hide our true selves. You can filter all your photos. You can auto-tune your voice. You can hide behind an array of avatars. Or, this is weird, you could choose to be authentic. (laughs) Okay. It can be very intimidating to choose to be yourself when we are constantly bombarded with products that are meant to uh, change us, products to lose weight, products to make our skin look more shiny or less shiny, tighter, bouncier, you know, more full. So many ways to change how we look, how we dress, what we eat. It's, It's actually pretty easy to forget that sometimes who we are deep down inside actually is uh, the best version. Sorry to say it. It shouldn't have to feel so brave to be yourself, but um, it is. I think a lot about who gets to be their full self. I think it would be hard not to after all the time I've spent in the makeup chair, literally like spackling my face, like painting someone else's face on top of my face, which is a necessity for women on TV. (laughs) Go figure. How freeing to not be worried what other people think of you to get to be authentic. This is Choice Words. I'm Samantha B. My guest today is Maria Bamford, and I have been a huge fan of hers for a very long time. I am incredibly inspired by her openness and her honesty and the way in which she speaks her truth. She is always beautifully woven in her mental health and her medication choices into her work with no thought to keep it private, seemingly. She will do her comedy act for literally one person (laughs) at a time. She is so true to herself and so true to her material, and it is so refreshing. But also, she's incredibly funny. I loved talking to her about this and her choice to marry her husband, Scott, who's an amazing painter. Her new book, Sure, I'll Join Your Cult, is the Lemonada Book Club choice for September, and it is a delight. So take a listen and make good choices. Oh my God, Maria Bamford, I am so excited to be talking to you right now. I really am. You are a, a magnificent beast of comedy, and I appreciate, I am honored and delighted to be on your program. It is, uh, it is I who is honored because, like, I can't believe that we've never met before based on the fact that I am such a huge and real fan of yours. And like, I don't want to, I don't want to make it awkward by telling you too many of the ways in which I'm a giant fan of yours, but I have feel that I have to just to provide context for everyone. <laughs> I Whatever you need to do. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. First of all, I read your book or I listened to your book. It's fucking fantastic. Okay. The book is called Sure, I'll Join Your Cult. We're going to talk about the book, but also I'm a really deep Lady Dynamite fan. Yeah. I was grateful to be a part of it. Uh, TV shows, as you well know, take a lot of effort from so many people. And I was so delighted uh, that people would put their efforts towards my show. They did with great results. Um, okay. And you talk all about the Lady Dynamite experience in your book, as well as so many other things. Okay. First of all, before we get into it, this show, like ostensibly, is about the choices that we make in our lives that reverberate through our lives. So that, that for me is a starting point. I wonder, like, what kind of a, what kind of a decision maker are you? I would imagine that's changed through the years, but how do you make decisions now in your life? Yes, I am fully medicated. And so I think I used to make decisions based on 
being led. Mm. I would have called it a higher power at that point, but I think there was some mania involved. So that I think is less likely to happen. Though I, you know, I feel, feel a whoosh of joy, uh, when putting things in a cart on, on the internet. Um, yeah. So now I'm a slightly slower on the uptake, but I like an impulsive sudden decision. I think compared to my husband, I make decisions slightly on a dime. Mm-hmm. But in terms of knowing that it doesn't matter on some level what your decision is, that there will be negatives and positives. So let's go all in, especially if it's going to be something very <laughs> small like a a restaurant choice right a restaurant choice. the bigger life decisions are a little bigger yeah well and so, but sometimes it's very important to people i'm trying to think what have my, my biggest choice has been i think being you know getting married that's a big choice mm-hmm. that part of taking a huge risk with anybody and this i think any relationship friendship I think is the ongoing risk taking of saying, you matter to me. I care enough about you to, you know, being vulnerable, saying, I'd like to, it would be really nice to meet you for a meal once a week or to just chit chat on the phone. Um, and sometimes that doesn't happen with friendships. Oh my God. Uh, and then you got to talk about it or not, or not. You can also, you know, not talk about it and just go, ah, it's fine. Um, but like, yeah, it's, it's, I think relationships of all kinds are very, are terrifying. They are. And you know what? Like they always are in the, in a good, I mean this in a good way, but they are work. Like you have to, you have to exercise them. You have to like choose them and work on friendships. Yeah. I definitely feel like that's a presence in your in your book because you talk about people who showed up for you in like in a meaningful way, you know, when you weren't doing well, people who would just like come and sit by your side. And how valuable that is. Hmm. That's at least what I, I didn't realize because I think when I've had people who, when they've been ill, um, I haven't always stepped up and just been there for the person, been there in the same room with them. Or those are the most powerful memories I have are friends coming to visit me every single day when I was in a psych facility and just sitting, sitting next to me. Cause I wasn't talking. I wasn't really having anything. Uh, yeah, just sitting with me and, uh, Paging through the most recent O magazine. <laughs> or an O magazine from three years prior that was still sitting it's there. Like, it's like, word. I'm sure someone meant good, well by it, but they had <laughs> a pile of old New Yorkers, which <laughs> no one can read in the psych ward. No one's doing any reading. I'm making bird noises, and I see a lot of things that other people aren't seeing, I guess. <laughs> Let's get into it. Let's hear what David Remnick had to say in 2004. I like that you talk about Scott so much because he's such a he's a presence in your work that feels like a in a way it's like a little jewel box to me. Like I like that he's a character in Lady Dynamite. He's very present in your book. Does he, does he like that? Is he, he's must be okay with it by now. I think it's kind of mixed, you know, cause it's like, he's a private person and, but he, he, he knows like he's a painter. So he knows like, you know, your life is your art, mm-hmm. you know? So, um, but I think that has been, it's vulnerable. For, I, I can't imagine that it's not vulnerable for him. And I think I've heard that from him of saying, hey, you know, I, I can't even remember the specific joke, but it was something where I, it felt too much for him. And I was like, okay, oh my gosh. Yes, of course. 
but then other people in my, like my sister, uh, has complained about it several times about me using them at her work. And I just refuse to stop because <laughs> she keeps talking to me and there needs to be a harsher blowback. She's, she's not withholding enough. She's keeps, she just keeps feeding the beast. <laughs> Want to listen to the rest of this episode? Head over to your favorite podcast player to hear the entire show. I highly recommend it. 